So welcome uh, to our MP night. Uh, my name is George Lanitas. I'm the principal here at Frontier Regional School. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have um, family or friends that couldn't make it this evening, I do want to let everybody know that we are recording this. It's going to be available uh, online as well. But welcome. Uh, we do this every year. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to share with you uh, the AP offerings that we have here at Frontier. So basically, we're, divided, we're going to divide this evening into two parts. The first part is going to be a presentation. Uh, by the teachers, they're going to they're going to present the classes that they offer. After the presentations, you'll have the opportunity to walk around and to check in with the teachers, uh, to see the materials that are can be a part of the class, to ask questions. So it's really an informational night for you to find out what might be a good fit for you for your child. Um, and it's a, it's a really good opportunity to ask questions and to learn more about what we uh, offer here at Frontier. So a couple things uh, before we get started as well, just in case uh, some important things. If you need to use the restroom, uh, when you come out of the LMC, the restroom is, uh, if you just go to the right, there are restrooms there that are unlocked that you can use. Um, and then just very quickly getting back to the AP portion. So we're going to have uh, presentations on the classes and on the capstone as well, which uh, Ms. Walters is going to talk about. And just so everybody knows, and this information is detailed in the flyer also, we're offering something new this year called AP Explorer. So if you have a student that is interested in taking an AP class but is a little hesitant, they'll have the opportunity to take their, a certain, there are certain AP classes that are being offered as, as, as AP Explore classes uh, where there are, there's less of a workload. Uh, they won't have to take the AP test, uh, but they will get a grade, they will get a grade bump at the end of the class. Um, and so that right now that is being offered in some of our English classes and some of our social studies classes. Just so you know that that's on the that is on the table as well. So welcome. It's really nice to see everybody uh, here at Frontier. Uh, if you have any questions throughout uh, the evening uh, for me or for whomever, please don't be afraid to approach us. So thank you. I'm going to introduce uh, Allison Walters now. She is our uh, department chair in social studies, and she's going to present to you about our capstone. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm Allison Walters. I'm the my 25th year here at Frontier. I've been involved with the Capstone program since it first was brought there as a possible program to bring to Frontier when it was still very new um, to the college board world. So I have been teaching AP seminars since it came to Frontier and have done the training for AP Center and AP Research, so I, I feel comfortable in doing the presentation. AP Capstone is a unique program that not a lot of um, schools in Western Massachusetts offer. In fact, most schools that offer are in the South or um, the West Coast and further down the East Coast. What it is is it gives students an opportunity to build skills in areas that um, are not content area subjects. Um, so for example, AP Seminar is a class that the first semester, while I use a theme of human rights for training them in using some of the skills, when they're moving on to doing research projects and presentations, they're getting, students are getting to choose the type of material they, they want to look at, the subject areas. Same with AP research, where they get to pick a research topic that they are interested in and do some unique research, preparing them to move on um, to college. So, Capstone program looks at skills that students need, not in learning the content and then just having an exam at the end of the year to measure how much content they have learned. The two courses, AP Seminar and AP Research, go together, but AP Seminar is a, the first class that students need to take, but students can take it on their own, like by itself. They don't have to move on to research, but it is encouraged because to be able to say, if you're applying to college, that you have done independent research that is not related to anything other than your own interests is sort of a, a great way of being able to tell universities the, the seriousness and, and the scholarship that you're able to, to do. So you can, the capstone program has two components. There's the AP capstone certificate, which means you do AP seminar and AP research, and you get three in both of those courses and you get a certificate. 
There's also the AP capstone diploma, which is like like a um, almost like an honors high school diploma. You do the two capstone programs, and then you do four additional AP classes, and you qualify for an AP capstone high school diploma, which is actually something that college applications. It's, it's a type of high school diploma that students can acquire, and they get acknowledged for um, doing that, two, distinct, two different distinctions. The things that students learn um, in AP seminar, they learn to think critically, to read critically, they gather credible evidence, they analyze, interpret, evaluate different perspectives, they learn to make claims, inferences, and connections, lines of reasoning, they work together in teams for one of the projects, and they have to do presentations. They have to do two presentations that get scored as part of their research work. And then moving on to AP research, they're building on the skills the second year. They identify and refine research questions. They seek and synthesize background information. They align with a, a, a study design, and then they go through analyzing and evaluating findings, engaging with consultants, peer review, and then they do presentations of their unique um, research that they've done for, for the whole year. Um, for AP Seminar, there are three components that make up their score. There is the team project and presentation with an individual, um, and then there's an individual research-based essay and presentation, and then there's an end of course exam. It's a combination of all of, all of these skill building um, activities that they get to engage in. And in AP Research, they do an academic paper. Oops. They do an academic paper that makes up 75% of their score, and then they do a presentation and an oral defense where they're asked questions about the research that they've done. And Ms. Vernon does the AP research. Um, some of the benefits of the Capstone program, um, it does stand out with college admissions. Um, they acquire these skills that can be used in any discipline. They're not content area specific, um, and they get to choose what they want to do their projects on that the, the research um, presentations and papers are going to be on. And this is just some quotes that are coming from different schools, um, like this one's AP Seminar and AP Research are terrific classes that prepare students to think in non-formulaic ways, and that's from MIT, um, the Dean of Admissions. But students also have this portfolio of products that they created over two years that they can take to interviews and they can they can even think about areas that they want to be able to research when they move on. And these are just some of the universities that have been uh, signing on and um, seeing the capstone program as something that is doing the work to try and give students the abilities to handle the skills and practice the skills that they're going to be using all the way through college and even into their careers. Any questions? And I will be um, coming back up to talk about seminar, human geography, and world history. Um, and then I've got all kinds of material back on one of the tables. So, who's going to be next? Thank you. The English department is going to be presenting next. So, Ms. Martin, ready to come? Ready. All right. <coughs> <clears throat> so I'm Lynette Barnett and I teach AP Literature and I don't have a fancy slideshow so you just have to be talking. Um, so AP Literature is ostensibly um, a course, a year long course, um, where students read and write and talk a lot. Um, a lot of uh, Poetry, drama, short fiction, prose, poems, um, novels, kind of a mix of all of them. Um, spanning from the 17th century to the present. Um, I try to not just teach a lot of dead like that. I try to mix it up. I think it's really important. Um, and so I have been teaching for 20 years. I've been teaching AP literature for, I did longer than I probably have been for. Um, and it keeps changing. And I keep asking myself, why do I teach literature? Because it keeps changing and, and the, you know, I think 
what we feel we need in society has changed a lot too. Um, and so I just recently Googled, right, why teach literature? So Antioch University uh, in 2021 had a really interesting podcast where they were looking at why it's important to um, teach literature, take literature classes, and write. Um, and I kind of agreed with all of their four major points. And the first point is literature teaches us about the human condition. And I feel like we learn about the human condition, we don't always experience the human condition in other people. So this is a place where we can kind of situate ourselves in something other than what is real outside, you know, outside of our windows. Um, literature teaches us how to empathize with each other. Uh, reading and writing help us break down barriers, and writing allows us to share new ideas with a wider audience. And um, I kind of feel like that's probably why I keep coming back to do this. Um, I feel like for me, literature is a way in, um, and it, it serves as both um, a mirror, right, reflecting who we are, and also uh, as a door other experiences um, and so that is what we do and obviously lots of discussion um, lots of critical thinking lots of uh, reading um, critical theory um, lens critical lenses um, each other's writing um, the exam at the end of the year has both um, multiple choice questions and essays, uh, looking at poetry, looking at um, excerpts of fiction, and then an independent reading book. So students also get a reading kind of on their own as well. Um, and so it's kind of a little bit of everything, but uh, that's what it's going
students to cultivate essential literacy skills and habits that should serve them far beyond their academic lives. Throughout the course, we read an array of nonfiction texts that require us to cultivate a supportive community of critical thinkers and readers who challenge each other intellectually. And here's a quote from one of the texts that we read called um, Think Again, where Adam Grant, the author, says, the purpose of learning isn't to affirm our beliefs, it's to evolve our beliefs. Um, which necessitates a unique and valuable skill set that this course and the community of learners help each other to develop. So if you're interested in the study of language um, within our world, this might be a good course for you. Now I'd actually like to call up our math departments. We're going to speak to you about their, their offerings. Um, B comes before J, so that's Hi, uh, I'm Steve Weiner, and I teach AP Statistics. And um, the course is uh, relevant to so many fields. If you're thinking uh, health-related, business, uh, even legal profession. So we, any lawyers in the group, um, we, you know, what constitutes evidence? We walk anyone here from Woburn? Anyone heard of Woburn? Okay. Um, so, almost every year we watch this movie called The Civil Action, where there was a tremendous amount of uh, spillage into the nearby river of harmful chemicals, and there was a cancer cluster. And so, you look at the national rate of a certain kind of cancer, and you look at the rate from this community, and it was different, and the overriding question is how different does it need to be to be able to place blame, do something about it. Um, so there's four branches, four kind of areas in the AP staff's curriculum to kind of get you from here to there. There's uh, data analysis, how to collect data both in an ethical way and in a statistically sound way so you can rely on the data. It's an advanced probability to uh, do the right calculations. And then the whole second semester we spend on statistical inference, uh, doing hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Um, and there is an intense amount of writing this course. Uh, when students come to me in the spring and they say I want to take this course, uh, the first question I ask is, what's your English grade? And you need to be a decent writer. I can help hone your writing skills. We have a great writing lab run by the English department. Uh, but you need a certain level of English proficiency to take this course because of all the writing. And after the student says, oh, I got an A in English, I then ask, what was your math grade? Um, so, yeah. and that's the difference between when you took stats in school and what we do now, because now we have this little handheld device that can uh, do all the calculations in a heartbeat. And the question is, what are you going to do with those results? So, uh, there's a lot of analysis, a lot of writing. Uh, it is great for any field you might be interested in uh, in college. Um, someone said to me, what if I'm an art major? Well, maybe. <laughs> However, um, if you want to major in art and you take AP stats and you get one math, college math out of the way, you can take one extra art elective in college. So that was my answer to that. <laughs> so, um, it's a great course. I enjoy teaching it. Hope you all sign up. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. 
Okay, next up we have uh, Kate Johnson who does AP Cal. Oh, and I have some handouts here if you can get these. Hi, I am Kate Johnson. I teach AP Calculus here. Uh, I teach AP Calculus AB as opposed to Cal BC. The difference being AB is pre calculus and then limits, derivatives, applications. We get integrals, but we don't get things like series and conversion tests. Any of my math nerds, what any of that means? Or it's a little bit less than a Calc BC. If you get a qualifying score, it usually lets you test out of your Calculus 1 course in college, but not Calc 2. Uh, Mr. Blinder's totally right. Even if you don't want to go into anything mathy, if you take Calculus and then you take statistics, you may satisfy your higher college math requirements and never have to take those math. You get those taken care of almost for free in high school. Uh, calculus, I would say, is a must if you're thinking you want to go into business, economics, engineering, math, science, any of those STEM sort of fields are going to be taken anyway. Um, best case scenario, you get a great score, you don't have to retake it, you save the money, you save the credits. Worst case scenario, tons of exposure and it's your easiest class in your freshman year in college. I think of calculus college, that's a win. Um, it is an everyday, all year course because there is a lot of content that we cover. So it is a little bit of a consideration for your schedule. Um, any other more specific questions? I'll be in back. So now I'd like to call up our science department and they're going to be presenting as well. around them, 
It could be something uh, like the pH. It could be it could be the, the heat. And the cool thing is, is a lot of times with our labs, which is 25% of our coursework for this, uh, throughout the whole school year, is we'll it introduce a basic lab, and from there, the students decide how they're going to develop a lab based on what they learn in that very initial lab. And so they design the lab, changing what parameters or what variables in order to um, follow it all the way through and collect that information. Our last of our four big ideas is how biological systems interact and their systems and their interactions possess complex properties. So this is all being in a, interwoven throughout the whole school year. So, right. so in AP Biology, AP Biology, you're not only learning about systems and processes that are happening both at the macroscopic and microscopic level, but you are also learning a new language. There's a lot of a lot of vocabulary that goes along with it. Um, student expectations is both a hard and a fun course. How could the science of life not be fun? This is a college level course and students will be held to high expectations and mature responsibilities just like a college, college freshman taken in introductory biology. My parents' expectations is to support your student by not stressing grades. It's about the learning process. Encouraging them to engage in the material. <clears throat> engage in class. Ask questions and encourage them to participate in study groups. It's really important to understand we are challenging your students. And when they come to AP, AP Bio I can speak for, a lot of times it's the first time that they get something less than an A. It's okay. The big thing for us is that they are working to improve. Sometimes they feel like they got blown over by a steamroller. I am always available during the pace. I'm available before school. I'm available after school. So I like to try to de-emphasize the grades and see that your student is learning and growing in the language of biology. As they're juniors and seniors, you have to remember it. AP is, how would I pronounce? Um, help me out here. <laughs> when it comes to calculating the grade. It's weighted. Thank you. It's a weighted grade. So a, a B will translate into an A. It's not going to harm their GPA. But be supportive. How can you improve your grade? All right. How are you studying? Do they have a quiet space to study? Have they asked for help? Have they come for extra help? Have they been working on improving their study skills? So, I'll get another one. All right. I have an active classroom. Most of the material, the content is, is done at home during the reading, and then they come into class and they are actively learning, engaging, and talking. Here's an example. Hopefully we have some. And we don't have some. <laughs> but the student here is explaining what's going on with the cell membrane <laughs> to, to, the, to, the, to their other um, peers within the group. We do a lot of the modeling. Another one for cell signaling, where we're looking at the trophic cascade of how a cell is, is signaling to produce a certain protein. So we have lots of giggles, lots of laughter. Here's a stop motion video. This is another part of what they're doing, that the students make the stop motion so they can share it. It's also a study tool for themselves. All right, so AP 
biology involves active learning. It involves drawing, building and dis discussing concepts, learning note-taking skills. It's really surprising how many juniors and seniors really don't have strong note-taking skills. We work on that. Practical, practice critical thinking, asking questions to investigate, develop scientific skills, design and conduct science investigations, and their hard work will pay off. So, I will be at the back tables. Feel free to come up and ask questions. All right, Ms. Wong. Thank you, Ben. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zach Rom. I am the chemistry teacher here at front of here. Uh, and I teach the AP chemistry course. Uh, like Ms. Chadley said, the AP chemistry course runs every other year. So it's currently running this year and we'll be running it again in the fall of 2020. So if you are or your student is a sophomore right now, they'll have an opportunity to take that um, in their senior year. And if they're a freshman, they'll be able to take it in their junior year. The prereqs for AP Chemistry, uh, since we do require general chemistry here, your prereq is, a, of course, a passing grade in general chemistry. Hopefully I see some excellence in general chemistry as well. And students will uh, also be expected to have strong math skills. You don't have to have uh, any of the higher level uh, statistics or uh, calculus right, that they would do in their junior or senior year, but they have to have very strong algebra skills. We do math kind of right out of the gate in AP. Uh, for AP chemistry, what we look at is pretty much everything that we look at in general chemistry, but a lot deeper. And then we expand upon it as well. So we talk about things like atoms and molecules, and why certain molecules, and why certain atoms link up to form those molecules, and how. We talk about the properties of different types of compounds. Uh, and then we get into the study of chemical reactions and talk about pretty much everything about reactions. So how fast reactions go, how much energy is produced, and ways we can kind of predict it. It is a challenging course. There is a lot of material in AP chemistry. And like I already mentioned, it requires a lot of math as well. Uh, there are nine separate units, so things are kind of packed in there. But we also try to make a lot of time for labs and hands-on activities. I basically try to plan as many labs as I can like, physically fit into the course without you know, running over time. Um, so we do try to do a lot of things and a lot of hands-on. Um, so if you are interested in learning more, I have my stuff set up back there of the handouts and some sort of pictures of some of the labs that we do. Showed this to my kids too, um, my students. When I went into college, I was not going to be in science. I was not going to be in math. Uh, I was very much going to be in English or maybe communications. That was like just that was my strength. That was what I was going to do. Until I took an intro to environmental science course, and it quite literally changed my life because now I'm standing here talking to you, and I very well like you wouldn't be. So it just ignited passion inside me, and I was like, that's what I want to do. That's what I. That's where I want to go. That's what I want to learn about. Now I feel really lucky to be able to sort of share that with kids. Um, I've only taught the course once so far here at Frontier, and small sample size. Um, one of those kids went on to college to study environmental science because he too felt the passion and the spark that I felt. And I don't credit myself for that at all. It's really all material. Um, environmental science, it's very real. It's applied science. It's a little bit of chemistry, but you don't get too bogged down in all the atomic stuff. It's a little bit of bio, but you don't get way down to the cell. It's Ecology, it is anthropology, it is sociology, it is, it is everything. You know, writing, reading. One day we're going to be doing a lab studying cellular respiration rate of aquatic plants. The next day we're going to be reading Jared Diamond talking about what happened to Easter Island. We're going to have discussions. It's really all over the place. Uh, and everything that we talk about is happening in real life. Like when we studied uh, our population and demographics unit, uh, that, that first week the world hit 8 billion people. Uh, we are doing land and water use right now. Just last week in the news, the uh, federal government's going to have to impose water restrictions on 40 million Americans. 
every single thing I teach, there's something that makes that day or that week. And I can say, look, this is happening right now. So um, anyway, I can tell you all about the course and, and the units and everything else. If you guys want to go see it, that table. Hello everybody, my name is Levi Owens and I teach the AP Physics class here at Frontier. Um, and uh, we offer AP Physics 1, there's a, a bunch of different offerings from uh, College Board. AP Physics 1 deals with motion, um, and generally speaking, um, we start off with kinetics and one dimensional motion, two dimensional motion, and um, uh, we deal with forces and momentum and collisions and all this stuff. Uh, I try to keep my classes as um, hands-on as possible. I, uh, I, like Mrs. Chapley, I tend to uh, assign a lot of uh, reading and videos for um, home consumption. Uh, we take that in material and try and put it into practice in the classroom. Um, it is, uh, though physics and calculus are like bread and butter, uh, this course doesn't deal with calculus. We deal, uh, it is strictly um, an algebra-based uh, course. Uh, we deal with situations where we can solve all the problems uh, just with algebra, so a calculus course isn't necessary for this course. Um, uh, and um, yeah, it is all about modeling um, something that happens every day at every moment in our life this through mathematics primarily um, and uh, and there's a lot of different interactions out there that are that um, uh, are counterintuitive uh, until you uh, you look at these things through uh, through a little bit of a, a mathematical lens and that's what we try and do in AP Physics. Um, so if you'd like any more information on this course uh, I like all my other colleagues will be back there to answer any questions about uh, what exactly is in the course or any specific questions that you have for me. I'm sorry, yes, uh, we will be doing this uh, next year, uh, this, this coming year. Thank you, Levi. Uh, and now I'd like, actually like to call it the Social Studies Department. And Jill. We are our last presentation, our last presenters. history uh, can supplant the regular 10th grade United States history, but the AP United States history is a full year course that means every other day, and as we've already heard, well, the nature of AP can receive college credit. So the focus of the course is basically to accumulate an enormous amount of information and knowledge applicable to what we call in the university United States history one and United States history two. So that would be wherever you want to start with the United States history, Poland, period, et cetera, et cetera. Civil War, that would be one. And then two would be uh, reconstruction forward to however far you can take the course. Um, again, the basic structure of the course is for students to be able to take um, the advanced placement exam. But as Mr. Lineda said, we're now going to offer the course available to students who maybe don't want to take the exam because they may feel a bit intimidated by that, that's fine. Um, but again, the orientation for the course is to continuously accumulate information uh, about the subject matter to um, take, take the exam uh, come May. Um, uh, I'd be more than happy to talk to you all in more detail if anybody's curious about like how exactly that's all scaffolded and organized. Uh, but uh, I think that's pretty much all I want to tell you at this point in time. Please, please come see me. I'll be in the, in the rear uh, to talk to you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Moore, and I teach um, AP um, <clears throat> Government and Politics. And the focus of this course really, uh, it is a nonpartisan college level course. Uh, the students uh, will take an AP exam. Next year, we'll run every other day for the whole year. 
and um, <clears throat> we focus um, an awful lot on uh, the institutions, the policies, interactions, roles, and behaviors that characterize the constitutional system and political culture of the United States. We'll study uh, a lot of the U.S. foundational documents, my favorite, and I hope this is everybody's favorite, the Constitution, and every student gets one of these, their very own Constitution, and fascinating facts about it. And if we had more time, I'd read some of this to you, but I can give you one if you want one. Anyway, every student gets one. Um, more importantly, seriously, we engage in a lot of discussion. Uh, we focus on evidence, uh, factual information, and one of my goals is to get students to uh, be able to write an argument essay, you know, make a position, make an argument, and defend their position using facts and evidence. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, there were five like major themes. The foundations of American democracy. The interactions among the branches of government. Um, I smile because we've been having trouble with that these days. Uh, <laughs> civil liberties and civil rights, which I think usually is one of the most favorite things students like to talk about as well as I do. American political ideologies and beliefs and political participation. And this last one, I think, is so important right now. Um, well, really, the most important thing I want students to come out of this class with is to understand what it means to be a good citizen. Um, I think we've lost, we've been having a hard time with that these days as well. Um, and let's see, what else can I tell you? Yeah, understand the responsibilities of being a good citizen. And then probably the most fun thing we do is we get to go to Washington, D.C which we've not been able to do the last few years because of COVID. So this year we're going, as far as we know, we're going to go. And if you want to talk to me, I'll be back there as well. And I have um, a draft of our, of our itinerary for this year for our DC trip. That's happening in March. Thank you. I'm the last one, but I also teach three AP classes, so I get to talk about all three. Um, the first one I'm going to tell you about is AP Human Geography. It is a class that is offered to ninth through 12th grade. It is an elective that covers everything. There are 8 billion people who live on this planet now as of November 15th, 2022. And what we look at is where, why, why there? Why do we move places? How does population grow? We look at cultures. We look at political geography. We look at agriculture. <coughs> we look at um, urban geography. And we look at economic development. And we look at sustainability. And that's what we look at through the whole year. It is a foundation for younger students to just about everything that they will study. But it's also a way to cap, for the older students, everything that they have studied and to make connections with what's going on in the world around us. Um, and so that's, that is also available to be taken for uh, students who are a little hesitant about doing the full AP as an AP Explorer. And that's a class that's um, every other day, all year long. The other class um, that's a content area class that I teach is AP World, which is primarily 11th grade because it replaces the required modern world history class. You can take AP World instead. And AP World sort of looks at the big questions of when, where, and why is this all connected. We look from 1200 all the way up to the present, and we look at the complexity and the interconnectedness of what we have done over time around the world. Um, we uh, go with the AP government class to Washington, D.C. We go to the Holocaust Museum. We go to um, the National Gallery. We're going to go to the African American History Museum. We're also going to go to the Native American History Museum this year um, with uh, the AP government class. Some of the things that the skills that we work on are reading, writing, um, deep thinking skills, discussions, and again, looking at the complexity and the um, interconnectivity of, of the world that we live in. 
AP World is a 100% project-based course as well. Every unit of the course has a project component with it, which the students move through the class with. And here are just some of the ones that we've done this year. They started with teaching each other um, about uh, one of the civilizations and societies that existed around 1200. They did an anatomy and then autopsies of land-based empires, and I actually have an example of one of the projects. They did a whole unit teaching the ninth graders about the Columbian Exchange. So they went into the ninth grade class and taught the ninth graders by running a whole class discussion. They just turned in today podcasts for a book they read about the 19th century, and they were listening to each other's podcasts. Um, and for the last two units, looking at the post-World War II world, they're going to do a museum display. And it'll be up to them whether they want to do it digitally or if they want to do it in like a, a physical object. Um, and then they'll do a final project that is sort of like a yearbook or a scrapbook of 800 years of history and things that they found interesting. Um, and then the other class, which I mentioned before, is I teach AD seminar, which is open to 10th through 12th grade. It can be a standalone class or it can be the first in the two classes for the capstone program. And I have a lot of material back there in the books that I use. And I am happy to talk to people and I've got flyers and everything. So, thank you. So, thank you everybody for coming. So now you'll have the opportunity to, uh, to check in with the teachers, to ask questions. Thank you once again for coming this evening. We appreciate all of your support. Have a good evening.